हेलो स्टूडेंट्स सो चैप्टर सिक्स वी आर स्टिल हियर एंड वी आर स्टडिंग द रूट लोकस ओके ओके सो सो फार द स्टोरी इज वी हैव ओपन लुप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन ओपन लुप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन टी नॉथ इज इक्वल टू Let's call it uh, AS over BS. Both are uh, k times. Let's let's say k times AS over BS. Both are polynomial. Where we write AS equal to S plus S Z one. Times s plus z two to s plus z m and b s is equal to s plus p one poles s plus p two to s plus p n where m is less than equal to m. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we have to draw the root locus root locus meaning that draw the root locus means locus of the roots roots of the characteristic characteristic equation of the closed loop Closed loop transfer function T S, which is equal to there is something some value here divided by one plus T naught, okay. And so so the characteristic equation, characteristic equation is nothing but one plus T naught equal to zero. Oh, and uh, simply what we get, we put it that value one plus k a s over b s equal to zero, and that makes it b s plus k a s equal to zero. So this is the equation, is the characteristic equation. So this is the equation for the equation of the root locus. so what we are what we are doing for from the open loop transfer function these uh, z1 z2 to zm are the zeros of the open loop transfer function p1 p2 to pn are the poles of the open loop transfer function from there we try to predict the the roots of the characteristic equation of the of the closed loop transfer function for different value of k so we vary the k and we find out where the roots are we vary slightly again we plot again and so on so that way we get a continuous plot we were studying the steps we have to follow the first step was to just plot the Poles and zeros. So all the zeros you indicate as O, like this one, and all the poles we denote it as crosses, something like this. Yeah, could be complex as well, like this, and so on. So first you step one is first mark the zeros and poles. step 2 was drawing the root locus on the real axis because that is easy and how you do you approach from the right you have connect the first and second one then don't do anything about the this connect it again here okay don't do anything about this one and then 
this will connected it will look like this one so if it is a one two three four five so you have to mark one second you leave all even number you leave it so one two three four five now so these will be on root locus yeah okay so step two is done now step three step 3 we identify the number of asymptotes okay so number of asymptotes and which is equal to simply n minus m then we find out the the angles of all the asymptotes so angle of asymptotes is equal to plus minus 180 degree 2k plus 1 divided by n minus m we understood why it has to be like that then we identify the point of intersection of all the asymptotes and uh, those values that will be equal to okay so the so value point of intersection will be s equal to we can write it as minus we can write p1 plus p2 to pn then minus z1 plus z2 to zm divided by n minus f yesterday i wrote the real instead of writing like this one we wrote like the real part of this or I just write min, real of minus p1 and, and all there is no need of doing that actually so uh, automatically all the the pose which has the or poles and zeros which have the imaginary path will be cancelled because they are they will be in in the conjugate pairs so automatically taken care of so actually we don't need to write real yeah so but while plotting keep in mind that we don't have to really care about the imaginary part we just add the real part of all of them and divide by n, my, n minus m and you get the point on the real axis where, where all the asymptotes are going to meet how you we got that we can uh, we, we can find out from here so t naught is equal to what you get from here k s plus yesterday we took example we explained but now this is general purpose we are writing for any number of roots and zeros we can extend that whatever we did yesterday so s plus p2 uh, we have s plus pn and uh, we can write it as k divided by s plus p1 s plus p2 s plus pn and then s plus z1 minus 1 s plus z2 minus 1 and so on s plus zm minus 1 and we write k over we write all these are s plus p1 s plus p2 so on s plus pn and here we can this we got yesterday what did we get we got this one was nothing but 1 over s 1 minus 1 minus then z1 over s that's what we got yesterday and uh, similarly for all of then you get the same thing so s plus minus z2 over s sorry the it will be 1 1 over s 1 minus like this okay and so on here also you will have 1 over s 1 minus zm over s that's it yeah okay that's what uh, 
we are following the same thing what we did yesterday and that will be equal to k over okay and uh, here we can this can be uh, written as s to the power m uh, n minus m yeah plus p1 plus p2 to pn minus yeah minus z1 minus z2 to minus zm s n minus m minus 1 and so on okay and which can be t naught here I'm going to write here which can be approximated as k over s plus okay s plus p1 plus p2 pn minus z1 minus zm divided by divided by n minus m to the power here the power will be n over n minus m okay so let me this we are writing here and uh, we can approximate this as p1 plus p2 plus and so on to pn minus z1 minus z2 till gm divided by n minus m to the power n minus m okay so here the power we have to write here the power i am writing here power is n minus m so i am going to write it again here i am going to delete this one So what I wrote here is nothing but uh, this is approximately is equal to k over s plus p1 plus p2 to pn minus z1 minus z2 to minus zm divided by n minus m n to the power n minus m like this yeah okay and uh, hence the closed loop closed loop statistic equation equation becomes what becomes 1 plus 1 plus t naught equal to 0 yeah and this this equal to this when all those things of um, uh, this approximation we know that remember this is when s tend to infinity yeah? so s s is, or s is very very large very large then what you can write like this so one plus t not equal to zero and hence that tells us that uh, this plus k so s plus p1 plus p2 plus pn minus g1 minus g2 minus gm right n minus m plus k equal to zero that's what it tells you right this means that okay now this one has a power n minus m so this we can write as when s is very very large we can assume this is changing faster than this one hence this we can neglect and uh, the equation when s is very very large we can write it as like this what s plus sorry the divided by n minus m 
will be then okay so we can neglect and hence that makes it this equal to zero that really means that really means that this has repeated root in a way yeah so that that means the this root is a common to all of them that really, really means the, all the, uh, 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 this point is common to all of them so all lines when you extend will meet there which point s equal to you can write minus p1 plus p2 pn minus you can write like this g1 plus g2 to gm divided by n minus m is the point of intersection section of asymptotes okay so this is based on what we have studied yesterday uh, only now we have extended it to any number of zeros and poles yeah okay now we will look at the this is this is a step 3 about the asymptotes now we move to a step four so a step four this is about breaking and break away points we have to repeat the things we know already so t not s we can write it as k a s over b s yeah okay and now the characteristic equation we know that the characteristic equation of the closed loop system system given by 1 plus t naught s equal to 0 or simply b s plus k a s equal to 0 okay now we have to understand what the meaning of breaking and breakaway points so let's look at an example yeah so i think it's better we start with example itself so example consider t naught s equal to um, uh, 1 over not 1 let's say k uh, s plus 2 and then here we have s square plus 1 okay so we worked on this earlier and uh, uh, here if you look at this one we have a s equal to s plus 2 is equal to nothing but s plus z1 and b s equal to s square plus 1 equal to we have s plus i s minus i is equal to s plus p1 time s plus p2 where that really tells us that z1 z1 is equal to z1 is equal to 2 yeah and here we get uh, p1 equal to i and the p2 is equal to minus i yeah okay we plot them step number one we identify where the points are so let, let me draw it here so those points which points minus z1 will be the zero so this is minus z1 minus z1 is equal to minus 2 is the zero then uh, p1 minus p1 and minus p2 are the two uh, poles so we have one pole here minus p1 is equal to so um, minus p1 will not be here because minus p1 becomes minus i so minus i has to be here so this will be minus p2 
so minus p2 equal to i and here we have p1 is equal to minus p1 equal to minus i okay now next is drawing this one and looking at here we come from the right side and what we can make out from here is the root locus has to be go like this one okay why because the 180 degree angle will be satisfied to begin with and as we have seen that we come from the right side and the all and the here the uh, like whatever we have the first one either it is pole or zero from there there has to be the root locus okay so we have seen already all those things so here the root locus will be there we have also actually exactly we looked at this example so where we found this was there so we know this already okay from the previous lectures next thing is in one of them we found out that uh, here the from from here to here the root distance root 5 yes here 2 here, here to here 1 root 5 is the distance from here and we found that this will root locus will be some like this something like this one okay will not be this this is, this is circle basically we we actually derived the equation of circle that we got root locus will be like this one now i'm trying to explain the break in break away points now this uh, this point this point is corresponding to k equal to k equal to zero right so this is k equal to zero why k equal to zero because all the poles all the poles correspond to k equal to zero and all the zeros correspond to k equal to infinity that we know already now when you increase k what happens the root is the k equal to zero root is equal to the poles k is equal to infinity the roots are equal to the zeros in between you move you move k let us say one you will have the roots here more k more you here even more it will be here both there are two roots there are two roots because there are characteristic equation if you look at that the characteristic the characteristic equation is bs plus k s equal to zero and that really means is s square plus one plus k s plus two equal to zero you have quadratic equation i hence there will be two roots uh, these are two roots so you see there is one root here one root here at k equal to zero you k, let us say k equal to one one root here another here even more bigger k even here bigger k here here now look at this when for some k this will be very close to the real axis then there is a k when both the roots are at the same point right so there is a k there is a k where when both roots both roots coincide or that is repeated root right repeated root okay so this is breaking point right so you are getting there from a different direction you come and join it so this is the breaking point now if you increase k you have two roots again but now one will be here another will be here even more one will be here another will be here k infinity then one will be here another will be at the zero so we see that 
for any value of k, we have exactly two roots. Only one instance, both the roots are coinciding. Okay. That really means that at this k, there is a k when both the roots are coincide, uh, coinciding. Let us say that that k is equal to kr, let us say. So in that case, when s square plus 1, kr, s plus 2 can be written as s plus some value here, some root here. Yeah, so the, the, this will be the, the, let's call this is a, yeah, and and there will be power s. It will be a s plus a to the power 2 because this is a repeated root. That's what it tells you. This becomes, both the roots becomes the same. That really means that you have this, you can write it as s plus a to the power 2 because this is a correct equation. Exactly it becomes, it becomes like this. This really means that if the original characteristic equation is equal to zero, then even if I differentiate it, still it will be zero. That's the meaning of the repeated root. So if I say that really means s equal to minus a, that, that's what it tells me. If you take, if you differentiate it, so if we differentiate this one, d over ds with respect to s, yeah, is plus 1 plus kr s plus 2 is equal to this becomes 2 s plus a will still be 0 because s equal to minus a is the solution right so that really means if we, if we differentiate this one still we get the same value means uh, we get still it is the the it still it is 0 Okay. So basically we are getting two equations. That's, that's the idea. So we get the two equations now. So one equation is here. We put uh, s equal to minus a here. Yeah. So and here there is another equation. And which equation we ha have here? We have uh, 2s plus kr. 2s plus kr equal to 0 or simply 2 minus 2a plus kr equal to 0 and that gives us kr equal to 2a. This also you can put the value here s equal to minus a so this gives uh, a square plus 1 plus uh, rather from here this is a kr right so okay so from here so a square plus 1 plus we have kr, kr, we have kr equal to 2a, so we can straight away put from here, so this is 2a, and then s plus 2, s is minus a, and then plus 2, plus 2, is equal to 0, okay, so we can solve it further, let's uh, do it here, so becomes a minus uh, here, 2a square minus 2a square so minus a square plus 1 plus 1 and plus 4a plus 4a is equal to 0 or simply you can write a square minus 4a minus 1 equal to 0 so a is given by a equal to a equal to 4 plus minus root 16 okay plus 4 over 2 which is equal to 4 plus minus so you can write 2 a equal to 2 and then plus minus and this is a 20 so we have 
root 5 here. Yeah. So solution, this point is s equal to minus a. So this point is simply minus 2 plus minus root 5. What we see here is minus 5 minus 2 is this one plus minus 2 5 plus 5 will go this side somewhere here right this will be minus 2 plus root 5 and this point will be minus 2 minus root 5 yeah. so this is the point and you can see that if this is a circle from here to here distance is root 5 hence the value here will be minus 2 minus root 5 hence this point will be minus 2 minus root 5 this is the idea we can differentiate it so that we get two equations one uh, one differentiation is enough because we have a value value a only and we have k we can find out both of them yeah there is more uh, the, the easier way also and which actually extend from this idea only yeah so let's discuss so now we understand what is the meaning of break-in and breakaway points okay so break-in where the branches are uh, going to meet and break away where they are going away so in the previous example we saw that at that point the this circular arc points are they, uh, they are coming to meet here and after that one went this side the other went that side so these and these are breaking away and from this side it is breaking in so now general purpose we can derive basically so this equation that is equation at the breaking points at the break-in or break-away points away points there are repeated roots right that's what we came to know repeated roots and hence we can write this equation bs plus kas is equal to some kind of s plus a right okay let's call it a1 which is the uh, repeated one to power r and then it will be s plus a2 s plus a3 and so on this is the repeated root r is greater than 1 yeah could be 1 2 3 depend depending on how many repeated roots are there if that is the case and uh, this is a characteristic equation that is equal to zero that really means if this is repeated roots if we differentiate if you differentiate even then the same things holds basically right so well, so uh, so what we have is basically b s plus k a k is constant so let's call it k r here right so so that we know that we are talking about the the or let, let's write it k b rather so k b is let's say break in break away point corresponds to k equal to kb and hence i wrote like this now this is a constant so bs then plus kb as is equal to what we will find from here is s plus a will be common and then we have all of them here so we will have r right so 
rest of the things will be there. Means a plus uh, s plus a will still be there, right? A, uh, s plus a one. So this is this one. So r becomes r, and then s. So it becomes r s plus a one r minus two, and then we will have s plus a two, and so on. Plus we will have s plus a one. R minus one, and then this will be gone. Then we will have s plus a three now, and so on. Means we will have this common here. But since this is a repeated root, this will be automatically will be equal to zero, right? So, so this my point is this value will be equal to zero, yeah. And hence uh, k b will be given by Minus b not b s over a s. Here, of course, what we mean by d dash s equal to d b s over d s, and uh, a dash s equal to d a s over d s. Now, this is the thing. Now, this one. We can put in the original original one. This is the way we did the last time also, right? So when we were solving it, if you put it there, uh, what do you get? You get b s minus b dash s over a dash s times a s is equal to zero, or what do you get? A dash s. B S minus A S B dash S equal to A dash S equal to zero. Okay. We can also divide it by. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. So, like this one, or simply, simply what we get is simply this tells you. Uh, simply, you can now write that a dash s b s minus a s b dash s equal to zero. Yeah. Now we can get the same condition if we do the following. Okay. So this you remember this one. Yeah. So. Okay, so we have this. So we can find out k. Instead of we can write from k equal to minus b s over a s, right? Now let's uh, say d k over d s. We do that, okay? And then what you get? Minus, and then you get b dash s a s, right? And then you get minus. B S A dash S divided by A S square, right? Okay. If we say, if you want to get this condition, we just have to say, if D K over D S equal to zero, we get. We get what? We get this. What we get? A dash s times b s minus a s times b dash s equal to zero, which is same condition as this one. So basically, instead of doing this one the the long way, substituting you have one equation coming from the The actual characteristic equation. The second one we de derive it. You get another equation, and then you you have uh, you can substitute value of k from one of them to the other, and you can solve it. Here, 
the k value itself you have found out you have differentiated with respect to s and set equal to 0 automatically you will get one equation which will not have k there and you can solve that and whatever the root of this equation will be the breaking or breakaway points so solving it root of this okay solving it the breaking breaking breakaway points can be obtained okay what we have to do we have this equation we just say k equal to minus bs over as differentiate and make equal to zero solve for s you will get the breaking breakaway points as simple as that Okay, for the same example that we solved, t naught s equal to s plus 2 and uh, s square plus 1 and this is k. Okay, and the characteristic equation is 1 plus t naught s equal to 0 and uh, or 1 plus k s plus 2 divided by s square plus 1 equal to 0. From here we can find out k equal to minus minus 1 multiplied by s square plus 1 divided by s plus 2 and uh, what we did we can just differentiate it and we get minus and then we get 2s s plus 2 minus s square plus 1 that's it divided by s plus 2 s square is equal to 0 or simply we get 2s square plus 4s minus s square minus 1 equal to 0 or we get s square okay so uh, we get s square then we get a 4s yeah and then we get minus uh, minus 1 equal to 0 okay from here we can find out the equation so uh, s equal to minus 4 plus minus root minus 4 uh, plus 4 over 2a and that we get minus 2 plus minus root 5 yeah so we get that now breaking points we get two values here and when we plot it, we, we saw that the actual, the root locus is not this side. All the root locus are confined to one side only. So, so this is something like this, right? So, breakaway point, breaking points, breaking breakaway points have to be on the root locus breaking breakaway points have to be on root locus but what we see minus 2 plus root 5 is not on the root locus locus hence remaining is remaining minus 2 minus root 5 so this is the break in and breakaway point so this is this point is minus 2 minus root 5 where this is minus 2 here yeah. so this also we saw the example basically a yeah? simple example to demonstrate how the break in points how to calculate that next is uh, step 5 and uh, step 5 is about angle of angle of arrival arrival or departure okay so what is the meaning of that so uh, with respect to the example that we are working on earlier t naught s equal to s plus 2 divided by s square plus 1 and uh, the plot we had like this 
and okay so so we have uh, something like this one right okay so the angle of departure meaning that at the at the complex uh, th these are the complex uh, poles so here if you want to know in which direction it, it has it is departing from here so if you want to know that how to find out so what do you want we want to know what is the angle of departure and what really we want to know what is the this angle so if, if you take the tangents from here what is this angle let's say this is phi okay so uh, this is easy basically that uh, we have already uh, we have studied the, the how the angles have to be so this is minus 2 this is r, uh, minus i this is i so let's consider a point here at this point yeah so this is a cross here cross here then this is a zero here and we are talking about very uh, one point very close to this one so this will be somewhere here right so at this point if we extend we just connect all of them so this is the test point p yeah we connect all, all of them since p is very very close to this one we have this 90 degree this one we don't know how much this so this is a phi here and this one this angle from here to here is let us say this is phi what is the relation relation is as we found out earlier since the t naught is equal to like this hence the angle angle t naught the characteristic equation is is uh, 1 plus t naught s equal to 0 or t naught s equal to minus 1 or angle of t naught s equal to plus minus 180 degree and uh, hence what we get angle of s plus 2 minus angle of s square plus 1 is equal to plus minus 180 degree or angle of s plus 2 minus angle of s plus i minus angle of s minus i equal to plus minus 180 degree that's what it is so so what we get these these are the zeros so we have phi then minus 90 degree this is s plus i this is s plus i point this one let us say this this one is uh, this angle is phi is equal to plus minus 180 degree so we can write here 180 degree let us say yeah okay so what do we get we get uh, phi equal to phi equal to Uh, we want to know the psi here, right? So psi, so psi equal to phi minus 90 degree minus 180 degree is equal to phi minus 270 degree. Yeah, so which is equal to, which is equal, equivalent to, equivalent to phi minus 270 degree plus 360 degree. I'm adding because this is negative so so that we get the actual positive value so we have phi plus 90 degree so phi plus 90 degree so what it tells us this from here to here 90 degree and then from here to here we have phi this is 90 degree this is telling that psi is equal to 90 degree plus phi so this is nothing but the phi only yeah so if this is 90 degree this is a phi 
the, the value here, this one is nothing but 90 degree minus 5, this one. And then this is 5, this is 90 minus 5, okay, and then uh, uh, and this value, uh, uh, what should be the angle here? So this is 90 minus 5, this is 5, and everything has to be 180 degrees. So what we get here is nothing but this simply is 90 degrees. So, so basically here, if, if you look at, if it's a circle like this, and then we have a point from here, and this line is making is normal to this curve, this root locus. So this gives you a hint that this is a circle basically, and this must be the radius. Also, we get from the the here it is root five, and here also it's root uh, distance is root five that we got earlier. That also gives you a hint that this is a circle and then you can check it also. So finally based on the this analysis you have found out what is the angle of departure. The angle of departure is in this case is angle of departure is equal to psi equal to 90 plus phi where phi is nothing but 90 plus tan inverse 1 over 2. Yet where is 1, yes, where is 2. So this is what the value is. Okay, now step 6. There may be some cases where let us say we have uh, the pole something like this one yeah and in that case uh, let us say this is going something like this we are on the right side so we want to find out the point of intersection with the imaginary axis so how to find out so this point so point of intersection with the imaginary axis and uh, we know that this is sigma this is i omega and what we are going to do in the characteristic equations if the characteristic equation is uh, t naught equal to as we said wrote earlier k a naught a s over b s okay so characteristic equation is 1 plus t naught s equal to 0 or simply B s plus k a s equal to 0. If you want to find out, let us say this is the one which is actually intersecting the imaginary axis some, somewhere, then what will we, we will do? We will just put put s equal to s equal to i omega in that. Yeah, so the, since this is s equal to 0 plus i omega equal to i omega and it will give you the value of omega that will be the point where it, it will be intersecting. So this will be i omega plus k a i omega equal to 0 and uh, this, uh, this will lead to two equations. The one maybe the real side the so th this will be equal to zero so this will have two e two equations so one will have the real part the other will be imaginary part make both equal to zero and uh, hence we can uh, there are two variables k is there and omega is there you can find out omega from there okay so two variables omega and k and uh, we will have two equations so we can we can find out value of omega which is going to where it is intersecting that. That's easy. Now step 7 is to just the plot, plot the root locus. 
and how we are just going to let us say we are we want to plot it for for example of that the uh, earlier example we have this so we know the the angular departure has to be so this is at the 90 degree like this one we also know that point of where it is going to intersect the the real axis is this one yeah so in this case uh, the example we uh, looked at we know that this is a circle so this is easy but still we can check it whether uh, this will be a circle or not how you take uh, any point on the circle uh, any point of the circle and you check the the angle yeah, so the angle from so you check from from here to here so whatever the angle is uh, let's say it's uh, psi 1 from here to here psi 2 and here to here phi so we can check and uh, the value should be phi minus phi 1 minus phi 2 has to be equal to plus minus 180 degree or equivalent yeah so as long as this is done we can find out right so so um, uh, let us say if the if this example did not have this a circular arc as a root rock uh, root locus we can actually try different points so not this point we try this point or this point this point this point so this is a manual method the graphical method so we can try different points in the neighborhood of the origin uh, uh, neighborhood of, uh, of the uh, point that we know is the on the root locus and accordingly we can find out which way we have to go so this is the manual way of doing it that uh, was used earlier but nowadays we have computers so automatically you can plot it even in MATLAB or Scilab. So this is what to, step 7 is to plot it. Okay, so uh, either you make a lot of trials, you do it or use computers to do it. Yeah, or, or uh, like maybe you have, uh, you can write your own equations uh, based on that you can do. So all those things. Uh, there are many ways now uh, graphical method used to be very difficult now the step uh, once you have done that once you have drawn that then you can if you want to find out for a particular point what is the value of k then how to find out so in uh, in the example uh, we were working on so this d naught s let's call it a step eight uh, where we are finding out the the k value the t naught s equal to let us say uh, the original one is k okay so k uh, s plus 2 s square plus 1 so we had two of them here and uh, uh, this is the root locus it goes like that now uh, let us say at this point we wanted to know you want to know this point okay what is the value of k here okay so what will we do okay so we know that uh, start from here so we have 1 plus t naught s equal to minus 1 and uh, uh, sorry equal to 0 is the characteristic equation of the closed loop system uh, and hence t naught s this is the magnitude is equal to 1 uh, that tells us that k times magnitude of s plus 2 divided by magnitude of s plus i divided by magnitude of s minus i is equal to 1 and hence k we can find out right so what is the value of k k will be k will be simply k will be equal to uh, magnitude of s plus i times magnitude of s minus i divided by 
magnitude of s plus 2 where s corresponds to the point where we are considering we want to find out the k value so, so basically what it tells so we draw a line from here to here from here to here on here to here let's call this point p uh, let's call this one z1 this one p1 this is p2 uh, Okay, let's call it point uh, Q. Now, K will be equal to, looking at this one, so the, this, this point is nothing but S, S uh, minus I, right? This is S minus I point. This is S plus I point. Yeah? <coughs> no, uh, no, this is not what I meant. Uh, basically, this this point is uh, I, and uh, this point is minus I. This point is minus two. So this vector is S minus I. If this is S, right? So this point is S. A point, point S, small s. So S minus I. This one is. Uh, this vector is s plus i and this vector is s plus 2 okay so if i want to find out k we get simply equal to s plus magnitude of s plus i the magnitude of s plus i or modulus of s plus i and that uh, is this part pq so pq multiplied by s minus i this is s minus i that is uh, this is p2 p2q multiplied by p1q divided by divided by this which one uh, z z1q z1q so you measure from here multiply by whatever you measure here uh, the first the, you measure this multiply by this divide by this you get the k value which corresponds to this point and hence uh, if you have a system where uh, you can change you are able to tune k you can change accordingly whatever k, k is required so your this is the this will be the pole of the closed loop system that's what it means here you are going to place the pole of this is a desired let's write desired uh, pole of the of the closed loop system loop system or simply desired root of the closed loop system is the same thing okay so this is how you are going to do yeah, so this uh, yeah uh, we took long but i did it purposefully so that we also understand you know so it's important little bit it may be a little bit confusing also so we have to look at some examples some examples i kept the same again and again we talked about uh, to look at the different aspects so that when you know the solution already then when we talk about it we can relate more you know so uh, as far as the root locus is concerned this is what it is and the next you have to actually practice the more you practice more you will uh, have insight into it